One of the most difficult things about learning Irish fiddle is mastering the bowing. It's why I teach an entire course about bowing and Irish fiddling, um, and while it's not open for enrollment right now, if you'd like to be the first to hear when I open the doors again to my program Find Your Lilt, you can sign up at Hannah Harris Keel, that's C-E-O-L, dot com forward slash waitlist, and you can find out all the details there. But today I thought I would share a quick tip with you about how to get better bowing strategy, and this should be great for you if you are classically trained and you read sheet music, but if you don't, then you can also find some benefit in this too. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking a tune that I'm working on right now, it's a Liz Carroll reel called Sue McNamara's, and I'm going to go ahead and take the B part and break down my strategy for you. So something that we're taught in classical music when we're reading sheet music is to anticipate a few measures ahead. So you want to know where you're going in the tune, you want to make sure that your fingers are set up to either do a big shift or maybe a double stop pattern. You just want to know if something tricky is coming up. So we can translate this directly to Irish music. It may not be as technical or complex with shifting and chords and whatnot, but there are some patterns that can be a little tricky. In the B part of Sue McNamara's, there's a part where you rock back and forth on the string. And because of this, we have one uh, lower note here, a C natural. It's staying the same the entire time. And then we have a moving line over top. This is a pretty characteristic pattern in a lot of Irish reels, not just ones that Liz Carroll writes, but uh, plenty of others in the tradition as well. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to let gravity help me out here, and I'm going to emphasize that moving line more than the line that's just staying the same. So to do that, I want to make sure that this moving line always starts on a down bow. So I know that that's coming up in my tune, so what I'm doing when I'm reading the sheet music is I'm actually keeping in mind that this pattern is coming up, and while you can bow a tune many, many different ways, there's no one correct way to bow a tune, there are certain patterns where you are going to want to have a specific bowing in mind, and this is one of them. So for rocking back and forth on the string, you could either start with this uh, low two on a down bow and slur into the first note. Or maybe you're starting this on an up bow. So you're still getting that pattern either way, no matter if you're starting out on a down or an up bow. As long as you're hitting that three on a down bow, you're golden. And I'll go ahead and play the whole B part for you so you can hear how I'm doing this, but I'm not going to play the B part the same way twice. I'm always going to switch up the bowing, but as long as I end up in that down bow right here, and I know it's coming, so I know that I'm setting myself up for it, then that is a great strategy for getting a consistent sounding bowing. So here we go. This is the B part. <laughs> I didn't play it the same way twice to lead in, and I honestly I'd have to watch this video slow-mo to break down what I was doing exactly, but in my head I was thinking, alright, I've got another pattern coming up, or I've got several of those patterns in there, so I'm always trying to aim for that down bow. And if I feel like I'm going too much in an up bow, then I will make a um, I'll make an effort to correct that and stay uh, within a good parameter to hit that down bow nice and strong. Use gravity to really bring that line out and emphasize it. So there's your quick little uh, tip for today on bowing strategy. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you'd like to hear more bowing strategy tips, and I will talk to you soon.